Hello and welcome to another edition of Ambient Talkie, a show where we dive into some weird and wacky equipment and wonderful, call it whatever you want music. I'm Andy from Two Round Robinsons and I hope you're ready for some generative stuff. The performance of my last video on Norns was quite something else and I would firstly like to thank everyone for tuning back in as we continue our journey exploring Norns own capabilities by checking out some of the scripts that I like to use the most and are most in use within my setup. Now, we know from the previous episode that Norns is an ecosystem that has loads of scripts and within a year of owning Norns, I haven't really managed to check all of them out as I tend to give far more time to the ones that I feel most comfortable with and it has given me more than enough possibilities so I can maybe focus more on music creation. Before we dig into the episode itself, I'd like to give a brief disclaimer here. Firstly, I am in no means an expert on the following scripts. So if you want a deeper dive and a detailed look into a script, I suggest checking out the documentations for yourself or maybe find some more detailed video on the subject, which I will surely link in the description down below. Secondly, I will be covering more scripts in the future episodes. Today's episode, as the title suggests, is focused far more on the generative sequencer based script which of course I tend to use a lot. Now, going by the old Eno definition and my own limited knowledge on synthesis in order to define what generated music is, generated music is music that is ever different and changing and is created by a system or a machine, in this case a Norse. So in, in my own limited interpretation, we give Norse a bit of information and let the script do their own thing with this information. So for example, if we go to a false predecessor called raindrops, we can just start the script, maybe turn the knob and listen in. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Well, the thing is, we can go to maybe the parameters menu here, and we can limit this information by maybe changing the delay, but maybe changing the scale or the root note or even the synth engine itself. And, you know, if we combine, let's say, a different source to this, so some droning from OP1 or whatever synth instrument that you wish, you can get, uh, let's say, a far more unpredictable result out of it, meaning that it's maybe in a way far more interesting than it would be just by doing a normal sequence. So in this case, you're letting fate decide a bit what's going to happen within your own composition. So if you visit the Norns.community site and click on the Generative tab, you can see loads of generative scripts. However, like I said before, I will focus more broadly on the ones that I tend to use the most. And if any of you have checked my previous videos, you would see that one of the most used scripts that I use uh, and its own generative nature is called Fall Again Develop by Ambilic. So this is Fall, and going by a very simplistic explanation, we have some lovely low-resolution leaves dancing in the wind and falling to the ground. Whenever they fall, they trigger the Autumn Engine, which is Ambilek's own custom-made synth engine made specifically for this script. In my own opinion, it sounds absolutely lovely. 
and I even sampled it to so I can use it maybe on OP1 to be played chromatically. Now, if we do a bit of menu diving with Fall, let's say for example we change the page, we can maybe see that we can change a bit of parameters here as well. In this case, we can change the scale. So let's say we can change it to a major pentatonic mixolydian and all that fun stuff. Maybe we can change even the root note and so on. We can even change the notes in the scale themselves but for that we'll have to maybe jump to the parameters menu here and since we're here you can maybe see that we have loads of more stuff that we can maybe limit the script itself in order to trick norse to play it on our own accord let's say for example we have here the velocity of set leaves we have the delay time we have the scale and the notes that we can basically change on a whim and we can basically even change how the wind behaves and how the gravity behaves within a script now going back here we can maybe if we move the uh, menu a bit further we can come to the whole autumn engine itself meaning we can change the bits so for example we can go a bit more lo-fi or a bit in a higher definition we can change the envelope and going even further like in the parameters menu we can change the delays and whatnot meaning that these delays will not only act with uh, the sounds from autumn engine itself but it will also act with it with whatever you have rooted into norse itself now going a bit further you can even change the lfo however personally i don't used to tend to use this that much as i like to maybe just use whatever comes on the screen and since we're on this screen let's say so this is last but not least options you can even randomize a few a few things so if i press let's say for example this button called k2 i can randomize the current scale so if we stayed on mixolydian with a b2 as a root note we can maybe just randomize how this leaves will fall to the ground another good thing is that if we press this little thing we have a bit of slice and fade options here so if we press this button it will randomize the scale itself so we see here that we have minor pentatonic scales let's say for example as opposed to the mixolydian one which we had before now, if we go here into the parameters menu, a good thing about Fall is that it's just not, you know, it's not limited only to the uh, autumn engine, but it also has a option to use MIDI. So if you have an OP1 or whatever synth that you need or a neural rack system or whatever, you can maybe basically send MIDI information outside of the norms itself, meaning outside of this script particularly, and in this case maybe use false as also just a sequencer or a combination of the sequencer and autumn engine. Now another one that I see returning to again and again is quite a recent one. It's called what I assume is LL dash 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 L or just line script. I'll refer to lines. If by any chance that the developer Infinite Digit is watching, please correct me on the right pronunciation in the comments. The idea here, as far as I am aware, so let's just start the script itself the idea here as far as i am aware is that it's a musical emission spectrum so the spectrum as you can see here is made out of different sectors you can basically jump within the sectors by pressing the k2 and k3 button and you know with this each sector emits notes you can change the 
basically the sector size just by holding maybe K1 and moving the encoders or not the sector size, but this, I guess, in this case, a sector uh, sector's own characteristics. You can move, you can basically change the sector size just by moving the encoders, as you can see here. And you can basically hear that it sounds absolutely lovely. It's ethereal and it just kind of, you know, it it's it's such a smooth sounding synth engine here. Of course, with Norns, if you go back to the parameters menus, you have loads more which you can control. You can basically change each sector individually, so its own, let's say, characteristics of the sound. And you can even use MIDI out and MIDI in in order to trigger when either the sector plays or when either any outside or outboard machine that you have responds to the sectors themselves. Now, one of my personal favorites here is that you can basically turn off the generative nature and just use it as a uh, as an instrument itself without a generative nature meaning you can if you own a grid or you own let's say any midi <sighs> midi keyboard or whatever you can basically turn this off and just play it yourself and it sounds absolutely lovely you can even sample it this way far better uh, for some weird stuff, you can maybe change the scale, the time scale. So if you go in a very, very short while and you have it, you can hear that it's doing very different stuff than it was before, which was far more, you know, smooth and uh, even esoteric sound. I don't know. It's just such a lovely thing. Another good thing to do is basically you can go to the source submenu here and if we check here you can basically add a bit of noise or you know you can put a bit of a bit of input in your uh, from the whatever machine that you're using or you can even basically load a loop file i'll for example i'll load something from um Go outside music, uh, field recording pack, which I tend to use quite a lot since it's it's recorded quite lovely and it sounds absolutely fine. So if I just move the loop now here, you can hear a bit of streams and birds. So in this case, you really have like a lovely addition to the synth engine itself as you try to incorporate just within norns itself not using any outside sources you can incorporate just lovely additional textures by using the source submenu here which i found very inspiring now another cool thing that line script has is gating and you can use the gate function you can basically you can hear now that it's gating. And you can maybe change the pattern-wise of this gate. However, I tend to use this far more if I'm using, let's say, external rhythmical stuff that I combine with this generative script. And speaking of rhythm, we can maybe go to kick. Uh, yes. Um, line script also has a kick option so if i just make the kick known you can hear it in the background just doing a bit of that click sound and of course you can change the ratio you can change the bass frequency the preamp the decays the clickiness of the script as well you know changing the pattern by changing the euclidean options here and of course, with this, you have a what's essentially a generative type script that has a few more 
additional parameters that you can maybe change and within just within a box within one script itself you can create a very very lovely let's say lovely sounding composition just by using line script itself so yeah it sounds lovely i really would recommend if anybody owns an orange shield be sure to you know give this one a try as it sounds absolutely magnificent next what i like to touch upon is a script i don't even pretend to fully understand and neither do i really wish to i kind of feel it would destroy the magic of the script for me as the script that's called flora remains one of the deeper norm scripts based on the l system principle and it fits far more into the category of a sequencer there than a pure generative script however fiddling around with it it has a spirit of a generative synthesis so stay tuned to find out what the fuss is all about so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna open up flora and we can fiddle a bit and just see the potential of the script so um as you can see here we have two plans each of these plans is playing a sequence that is defined by the shape of the plan now we can change the shape of the plant meaning we can evolve this plant just by uh, basically holding k1 and moving encoder 2 as you can see it kind of changed there we can of course do the same just by to the other plant if we change the plan here and maybe move it a bit now a good thing here is that you can even change the shape of the plant of the plant just by maybe moving the encoder free a bit and you can even jump from a previous generation to the next by using these two buttons here as you can see this is now generation three of three or in this case generation one of three now what do i mean by generations and evolving well with this i would like to say this check the documentation because i'm way 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 too stupid to fully grasp the potentiality of the l system sequencer uh in this case you know um try to try to try just try to see the uh, documentation for that in order to fully explain because there's no way that i can fully grasp this by myself uh, in our since we're talking about the l system shape maybe if we jump you know a a uh, menu a, to the next menu we come to the l system section now like i said i don't fully understand it but don't let this discourage you because i do you know by some way if i move through the through the menu itself and then just you know fiddle around a bit you can see we're changing the shape of the of the um of the plant itself or the flower itself or whatever and with this we get a bit more uh, a bit more information that will help or a bit more uh, meat in the pattern itself that we can maybe use so with this you can find basically you can find pretty good pretty good uh, different and interesting patterns just by moving a few knobs now like i said if you want to fully grasp flora check the documentation or even check a video out by peter bark which uh, goes into a deeper dive of what this lovely script does now of course if we move to uh to the next menu we come to the observe section which where you can basically observe your beautiful plants that you have created by fiddling around in the uh, l system section moving forward you come to the envelope section or the plow section here and you what you can do here is basically 
just change the amplitude or change the attack release and whatever so what i like to do here i'm just going by the personal things i like to make one of the plans a bit you know a bit a bit more easily so let's see what we can do here let me just fiddle around a bit we can hear it in the background a bit maybe maybe we can use the time a bit here now the uh, thing about here that i don't like that you know it's a bit fiddly <laughs> but <laughs> you know if if you have time which you should have if you're doing ambient music or doing any sort of electronic music that's far more based on texture then be prepared to spend a lot of time just trying to figure stuff out and see what sticks what doesn't moving forward um this is the water section and this is a again a far deeper sub menu here as you can see we can change maybe the note duration parameters parameters and so on we can change different stuff um again a good advice to in order if you're a bit too dumb like i am just try to fiddle around see what sticks what doesn't as you can see we're changing a bit of the pattern is ever evolving so let's see Basically, it's not that bad. Like for me, just fiddling around with whatever. But I, you know, that's that's part of the fun for me with this one. I just, in a way, kind of don't want to know everything. You know, um, maybe that's just a coping mechanism because I'm too dumb to understand it. But whatever, you can do different things. Uh, another thing that we should touch upon is the parameters menu so like i said before if we take a closer look what's happening within flora we can hear that it's still it's quite sequencer based it's not really i would say generative based at least by that but you know by changing a few stuff and if we take a look at what we have here we have root notes we have root note offset we basically can change you know the scale on a whim here um we can even use midi um so let's say so flora acts more as a sequencer than a you know a, a script with it with its own engine or a combination of both uh we can maybe even you know change the wow and flutter the pitch shift of the thing and you know create something really wacky <laughs> but uh, a, a thing that I really like is generation sequencer. What I mean by that is, if we take a look here, look what's going on. It's constantly changing. And of course we can change how much of these generations are there by going, let's say, to the... Uh, to the... Um, what's called? to the menu, to the L system section. And we can change how much of these generations are there. But you can see stuff is happening and it's not very predictable what's gonna happen. And with this, you can basically turn this sequencer into a more generative natured script, which again, you know, you can basically preset so it goes on the loop or maybe it goes random and, you know, now, it's even more um, randomized and generative synthesis based. So whatever, with this, like I said, I, I, I didn't do justice to the script and neither I plan to. I just wanted to showcase a bit 
that Flora exists and it's a wonderful script and even by not understanding the full potential of it, do check it out because it's absolutely mind-bogglingly deep and amazing. So, um, like I stated in the beginning, I'm in no way an expert, nor do I fully commit to understanding certain scripts, as I find it far more enjoyable letting fate decide and take care of certain aspects. However, I am open to completely changing my mind on the subject in the future, so, you know, don't take my word for it. I find generative spirited scripts on Norns to be absolutely lovely and inspiring. With just a few presses of a button or a few turns of the encoder, you can get something quite amazing that either works as a solo piece or is a great addition to your other textures in the setup. Of course, the community and its developers have gifted us mortals with a far more generative scripts for Norns than the ones I have touched upon on this episode, as these were just the ones that I tend to use the most. If you enjoyed any of these featured scripts, I'll link the additional content in the description below so you can maybe freely check them for yourself. Continuing our exploration on Norns, I invite you to join me next time when we will take a closer look into some of the most used audio mangling scripts for Norns. So be sure to subscribe and maybe even hit that bell in order to be notified when these episodes drop. If you have a Norns or Norn Shield, be sure to let me know which scripts are you finding to be the most inspiring for you. I love to hear your thoughts and of course to any non-known users, please feel free to comment as well and let me know if you find these types of videos interesting enough. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to give it a like as it surely helps the channel out. And with that, I'd like to say thank you for checking the video out. Thank you for sticking around and do join me next time. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, morning or afternoon, whenever you might be watching. And most importantly, take care. Bye.